Hello and welcome to City Beat. We are your central source of news and information for the city of Rocky Mount. I'm your host, Tamika Keenan Norman, Public Affairs Manager, and I told you about one of those departments that's my favorite, Parks and Recreation. The show is all about that department today and the new exhibits in the Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences, 270 Gay Street in Rocky Mount. I'm standing right now in front of the Children's Museum and Science Center where the new exhibit Be the Dinosaur is on display. So coming up in just a few moments, I'm going to speak with Sheila Long about that exhibit. And a little later on in the show, we'll talk about the art of the brick. It's all about Legos and it's at the Maria V. Howard Art Center. So stay tuned. A very exciting show on tap for you today. I'm Tamika Keenan Norman and you're watching City Beat. 3,000 passenger trains carried 1.6 million people through the Twin Counties last year. You can say our railroad tracks are the ties that bind Edgecombe and Nash together. When a child or teenager says, there's nothing to do in the Twin Counties, why don't you say which of the 1,500 youth programs in Edgecombe and Nash should I sign you up for? Twenty-three thousand students are taught by 1,500 teachers in all of the public and private schools in Edgecombe and Nash. We don't kid around when it comes to education. Hello and welcome back to City Beat. Uh, as I told you a little earlier, today's show is all about our two latest exhibits in the Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences. Right now we're standing in front of the Children's Museum and Science Center where we're going to talk with Sheila Long about Be the Dinosaur. And you're our Recreation Services Supervisor, right? Yes, I am here at the Imperial Center. And I think this is your first time on City Beat. It is. Yeah, and usually with folks who come on for the very first time I ask, you know, folks have fancy titles. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about what you do here. I work with the programming staff here at the Imperial Center. Mm -hmm. So uh, Allison Weedrick, she does the uh, art center, the mm -hmm. exhibits in the art center. So I work with her uh, to make sure we get everything in place. And the same with the Children's Museum, I work with the Children's Museum staff, as well as the theater and the art education building. So just to help make sure that we get the programs out to the community, we market appropriately, we work within the budget that's provided. So, mm -hmm. And you've been here about how long? About nine to 10 months. Oh, so, so it hasn't still been quite new. a year yet. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations being on staff. You all work really hard. We're really excited. We heard a lot about the new exhibit, yes. Be the Dinosaur. When did it open? And tell me a little bit about it. Be the Dinosaur opened on May 30th. Uh, we're excited. It's still fresh. It's still new here. Uh, it's exciting because this summer Jurassic Park is also opening in theaters. And so mm. it's kind of fresh on the mind. And everybody loves dinosaurs mm. from kids to adults. Uh, I've, my best friend from college, she always wanted to get married in the dino exhibit uh, at the museum in Raleigh. So okay. every, all age groups love dinosaurs. And so this is an opportunity, it's a unique experience. So you're not just looking and learning, you're actually experiencing it yourself. So it's through an assimilated, um, it's the same as a video game, but you're learning about how they went about to find food and that they needed water. and. Um, just the general environment that they lived in. So it's, like, it's exciting. And I know this is the Children's Museum, and you said dinosaurs, kids and adults like yes. it too. So what do you think adults can get out of this exhibit? I think they get the opportunity to be a kid again. Mm -hmm. So you get to come in and, you know, it is a Children's Museum, but it's also the Science Center. And so we're trying to create an opportunity for all age groups to experience what we have to offer. And so they can come in and they get to learn about the dinosaurs and they get to be the dinosaur just as much as a child does. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're looking to do here at the Imperial Center That in sounds general. really interesting because yeah. a lot about dinosaurs I don't know, so it'd be mm -hmm. a really educational experience. Absolutely. Uh, we had a school group that came in today. We got a lot of great feedback that they really enjoyed it. Um, there's opportunities for them to strap on dinosaur tails and they walk around. Um, there's a fossil find, and so a lot of the younger kids really enjoy those types of activities and playing with dinosaurs um, and learning uh, from the different displays and touch panels. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of the older kids and the adults are enjoying the actual experience of the simulated um, mm -hmm. video game where you get to learn and be the dinosaur. So mm -hmm. we're getting great feedback from it. Okay. And prior to this exhibit, you had Smokey Bear and yes. Woodsy Isle. Yes. Woodsy Owl. Woodsy Owl. <laughs> it's an owl. Okay. <laughs> Smokey Bear and Woodsy Owl. And tell me a little bit about why uh, you shifted gears here at the Imperial Center because back in the day it was one right. exhibit per year and now you're doing two a year. Right. 
we were finding that a lot of our visitors were coming earlier in the year and they weren't repeating visits as much throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And so we took a look at some other museums and uh, science centers to see what they were doing and where they were finding success and how they were getting people to return uh, visits. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to take, take a risk and try doing multiple traveling exhibits throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So it gives our visitors, our community, um, people that are wanting to come from the region, uh, an opportunity to experience something different each time that they come. And so um, you can come, you experience. We had Grossology before Smokey Bear. Uh, it was great, kids had a lot of fun, but once they saw it five times, it might not have been that cool thing to come again. Mm -hmm. So now you saw Smokey Bear three or four times, you come back, it's a different experience. So mm -hmm. we're hoping to be able to continue that unique experience okay. throughout the year. And what else can we expect this year here at the Children's Museum? On July 17th, we're going to open Zula Patrol, uh, Mission Weather. So if you're familiar with the PBS show, mm -hmm. we've also had a planetarium show that we opened back in January. Uh, so to couple with the planetarium show that we're running for the year-long time frame, we're also going to have Mission Weather. So it links the weather we have here on Earth with the weather you have in space, because a lot of people don't understand you have space weather. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a unique take on it. It's gonna be an exhibit that's gonna predominantly focus around your younger age group, so it's gonna couple very well with Be the Dinosaur, because a lot of it is for your older age groups. Okay, and once again, folks probably already know this, but the yes. Children's Museum is open on what days and, and times? We are open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to five, and we're open on Sundays from one to five, and it's free to residents on Sundays of the city of Rocky Mount, but otherwise it's an admission of $6 per person. Okay, and during that uh, Tuesday through Saturday, it's also $6. Yes. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, anything else you want to add, Sheila? No, there's lots of great things happening here in general at the Imperial Center. In addition to the Children's Museum, we have the Arts Center, and we also have the Theater and the Arts Education Building, so there's lots of great programs, camps, and exhibits. All right. Well, you're going to take us inside. We don't want to yes. show you everything, but we do want you to show us some things as a part of the Be the Dinosaur exhibit. Absolutely. Okay? I look forward so, to it. So take us on this tour. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, and welcome back to the Children's Museum and Science Center. We're going to walk you through to Be the Dinosaur. It's our newest exhibit that just opened on May 30th. Here's an opportunity where you can learn about the Tyrannosaurus and you can see the actual sizes of the different bones and uh, I think on the other side we'll get to, to see some femur sizes. Uh, you can learn some different aspects about how they, they ate and they saw and they sniffed. Uh, so the more you learn here at this station you'll be able to use further in the exhibit. After you learn about how your dinosaur behaves, you can also learn about the Triceratops. And here you see the femur bone. Uh, it's very large. And the Triceratops also had a horn. So you can see the horns from the Triceratops. And again, this is where you learn about the Triceratops and how they lived their lives and their environments. Just behind us over here, we have the skull size of a Triceratops as well. You see the vastness of the size of their horns. So he's pretty large and he's exciting. Just over here, we're able to see the actual simulator experiences. So we have six. And uh, so if you and several of your friends you want to go through and experience the dinosaur life together and learn how they lived and how they found water and food and uh, how they socialized as well. You can do that with your friends. Uh, so you'll take a seat at one of these uh, simulators, but while you're waiting, you're welcome to use the touch screen to learn about different things. So you can learn about the uh, Triceratops and it'll give you a checklist and you can find out well, how did they eat. Great skull filled with small, shearing teeth, and a beak perfect for cropping leaves and chopping through twigs and sprouts. The entire body is wide. All right. So we're going to take you over and show you how someone would actually go through the life of a dinosaur. All right. So here we are going through the environment. We just started the process. So we're in the watering pool with several other dinosaurs. 
and we're going to wait and follow the instructions. We just drank some water. And you use the joystick to look around. And it's just given us a mission, I think. You'll see it tells you as the Triceratops how healthy you are and if you need water, if you need energy, and if you need food. You'll see things pop up, so it'll tell you which direction to find other food. So now we're going to walk around. Okay. It's we another Triceratops it. friend. It's telling us to find a tasty plant. So now we're following the instructions for food. We see there's food. There's also a little danger ahead. Thank you for going on the tour with us of Be the Dinosaur, the newest exhibit at the Children's Museum and Science Center. We hope you'll come and enjoy this exhibit. I told you this was going to be an exciting show, right? So thanks to Sheila Long, Recreation Services Supervisor for our Parks and Recreation Department, for giving us that short tour on the Be the Dinosaur exhibit. Now, if you want to see everything and you want to experience it for yourself, come to the Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences right inside the Children's Museum. Coming up next after this break, we're going to talk with Allison Wiedrich and a few others about the art of the brick. It's all about Legos and it's the new exhibit in the Maria V. Howard Art Center. We'll be right back. Did you know that a total of 152,800 people live in Nash and Edgecombe counties? That's a larger population than High Point or Wilmington. I love running the Four Mile Tar River Trail as it follows the waterway across Edgecombe and Nash counties. And there's a 20 mile paddle trail that joins the twin counties together. How many local artists are in the twin counties? More than 600 talented people are creating wonderful works of art in studios and workshops all across Nash and Edgecombe. Hello and welcome back to City Beat. If you're just tuning into the show, boy, have you missed a really great segment. Sheila Long was with us earlier to talk about the latest exhibit at the uh, Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences. It's actually in the Children's Museum called Be the Dinosaur, so definitely stop by to check that out. And now with us, I've got Allison Wiedrich to talk about the art of the brick here at the Maria V. Howard Art Center. Uh, what, this is like your third time on the show or something? I think this might be my third. Yeah, you're, my becoming third. A, you're becoming a regular. Hey, happy to be a regular. Yeah, folks are going to know Allison. Hey. They're going to stop you everywhere. Hey, that's fine. Stop <laughs> me. Ask me about the arts. <laughs> but um, Allison is our curator mm -hmm. for the uh, Art Center and new exhibit here, Art of the Brick. Tell us a little bit about it. So Art of the Brick is a Lego sculpture exhibit that is uh, spectacular. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's fun. I think anybody of all ages, all shapes and sizes, all walks of life will relate to it. I think it'll have a great, great perception in this community. It's, it's very fun. In fact, right behind us is one of his favorite sculptures and um, it just gives you sort of a small taste mm -hmm. of the kind of abstract but also very playful nature of the exhibit. Mm -hmm. All about Legos. All about Legos. It's amazing how someone can put together these different Lego pieces to create these types of sculptures. Yeah, um, it takes an extraordinary amount of skill. I can barely make a house, let alone make a <laughs> globe or a head or a human for that matter. So um, it takes a lot of skill and uh, Based on what I know of how he manages to do this, he dreams up an idea and like a lot of artists, he will sketch and he'll use uh, graphic design paper, the squared paper, mm -hmm. so that he can sort of see how his creations will end up in Lego form. Okay, and we're, off. we're saying he, but Nathan Sawaya, mm -hmm. hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, yes. is the New York based sculptor who yes. came up with these uh, different figures yes. as a part of the art of the brick. Can you tell me a little bit about him? So Nathan is a very, very interesting guy because he started off as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. He, you know, has always been an artist like so many of us are, and he went the, the normal everyday way of going to law school, getting a job as a lawyer, and uh, he 
eventually one day woke up and he decided, you know, I want to be an artist and I'm going to take a risk. And he went off and he became this brick artist. And he's been hugely successful. He was um, just recently on, um, I forget what web channel it was, but he was advertised as being, as having one of the most best careers, most fun careers. Yeah. So uh, it was, he's, he's been very famous, very successful, and you might not know it, but you've probably seen his sculptures before, and he's just been all over the world, in, yeah. in China, in Europe, all across the United States, in Australia, Africa, everywhere. And that's where this exhibit, some of the places the exhibit has mm -hmm. visited. Okay. Yeah. This is just one of, one of his uh, tracks of exhibits. He has very large exhibits and he has smaller exhibits, and they've been all over the world. What was the last stop? Do you remember? Um, the very day that we got this exhibit delivered, Paris opened a similar exhibit by Nathan. So the day that we got it, it opened in Paris. So that just sort of tells you just how far reaching it is and just how special it is that we have this exhibit. That is amazing. Yeah. So how big is the exhibit? We're in one portion of it now, um, but how big is it? Yes, we're just in one small gallery. It takes up approximately 4,500 square feet, and that's approximately three galleries in the upstairs of the Art Center. Wow. Yeah. And you talked about, you alluded to uh, Nathan's success, mm -hmm. and CNN actually, I thought this was interesting, ranked his exhibit as one of the top 12 must-see exhibits in the world. Yes. You know? Yes. Why do you think it made that list? Uh, well, it is, it is record-breaking in every sense of the word. So it has, it uses thousands of Legos to create all these different sculptures, and they're huge. It's the largest uh, Lego sculpture exhibit in the world, and so it's really spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and it's very familiar. Anybody, young, old, it doesn't matter, is familiar with a Lego and can relate to it. So it's really, it's really a feat that he was able to make such a familiar toy into such an extraordinary medium for art. Mm -hmm. I think people will be really amazed at some of the things that he's done with it. They can come here and get in absolutely free. Yes, right? they can get absolutely free. What are the hours again? The hours are Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. And Sunday we're open from 1 to 5. And that's also a free day if you're a Rocky Mount citizen um, at the Science Center. So that's a very popular day that people will mm -hmm. come see the Science Center and come on over and see us as well. And it's amazing, right across the hall, so yep. you can see two great exhibits. Exactly. But I want you, I know you told me about this particular one, but yes. I want you to tell me about a few other pieces here today okay. as well, okay? Well, I'll show you uh, Hugman, and I'll also show you Gray. All right, let's go, girl. All right. So this here is Hugman. He's one of Nathan Sawaya's most famous sculptures because he uses them as an advertisement and as street art. So what you do is... You can take his hands off here and you can put him around something small like a, a bike stand or a tree or something. You can close his hands back up and you can take a picture of him. And one thing that we'll be doing here at the Art Center as a promotion is we'll take Hugman's picture around town and look out for details on our contest because we will offer the opportunity that if you know where Hugman is in that particular photograph then you might be eligible for a prize. We'll also be using him as a way to uh, advertise for the exhibit. So if you see him around town, do stop by and say hello. And I hope you enjoy Hugman here on display at the Art Center. Uh, beside me is Gray. This is another one of our favorite pieces here at the Art Center. As you can see, he's emerging out of this gray block. And what's interesting about this piece is that Nathan built this very early in his career, and this is reflecting his experience transforming from a lawyer into an artist. And here, this is him trying to emerge outside of the box of being a lawyer. So it's a very, very awesome piece. And uh, while I'm speaking on Nathan, I'll say a little bit about why we decided or how we decided to bring Art of the Brick here to Rocky Mount. Um, I first got the idea about finding a Lego exhibit from David Griffin, and when I typed in Lego exhibit on the internet, here he was, Nathan Sawaya, and it was really interesting because it was something that I'd never heard of before, and it was this extraordinary exhibit, and I thought for sure it would be way too expensive to bring to Rocky Mount, but it was actually quite affordable, and we're very, very excited that we have this accessible, really, really fun exhibit, and I can't wait for all of you to come and see it. Before I leave you all for the day, I'd like to share one more bit of information with you about this great exhibit, The Art of the Brick. 
Um, the exhibit that we have here is a uh, partnership between Nathan Sawaya and photographer Dean West. Dean West is an Australian who uses a m lot of photographs that he takes and pieces them together into one photograph. So in a lot of ways, they both do a very similar thing by taking very small pieces and making them into something much larger. And the pieces that you'll see by Dean West also include in their little hidden treasures of Lego sculptures, which you'll see when you arrive here. We have the physical Lego, Lego sculpture, and we also have the photograph. So I hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you'll look for all the very fantastic and very fun pieces that we have here, including a dog and some flip-flops. So don't miss out. And I hope to see you all very soon. Thanks so much to Allison Weidry, curator for the Maria B. Howard Art Center, for showing us a little bit of the art of the brick exhibit. And we encourage you to come out to see the rest of the galleries. It really, really is an amazing exhibit. So be the dinosaur over at the Children's Museum, then venture over to the Art Center to see art of the brick. It's exciting, it's new, and it's all right here at the Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences. I'm Tamika Keenan-Norman, and thanks so much for tuning in again to another edition of City Beat. Lego sculptures, which you'll see when you arrive here. We have the physical Lego, Lego sculpture, and we also have the photograph. So I hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you'll look for all the very fantastic and very fun pieces that we have here, including a dog and some flip-flops. So don't miss out, and I hope to see you all very soon. Thanks so much to Allison Weidry, curator for the Maria B. Howard Art Center, for showing us a little bit of the art of the brick exhibit. And we encourage you to come out to see the rest of the galleries. It really, really is an amazing exhibit. So be the dinosaur over at the Children's Museum, then venture over to the Art Center to see art of the brick. It's exciting, it's new, and it's all right here at the Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences. I'm Tamika Keenan-Norman, and thanks so much for tuning in again to another edition of City Beat.